All right, uh, so we're going to get started with the CPC session in here, and then deprecations, I think, is in uh, the other room right now. Um, some of the folks in the CPC are just taking a super quick bio break. Um, if I could ask those who are participating um, just to come forward so it, and move a little bit more close to, to the front so we can more quickly pass microphones around, because I uh, this is uh, one of the more interactive sessions. That would be super. And while we're doing that, I will share the good news, everyone, um, that we merged the agenda in to uh, the, the fi final, final, the final, <laughs> um, that's a joke, uh, uh, on, on the summit repo. So um, if you are, if this Excel slash Google spreadsheet is driving you, as crazy as it is me, then um, you can see it on GitHub in a nice table. Hello, everyone who's in the room. So a fun note and something to think about. If you haven't read the charter for the Cross Project Council, which is probably everyone who didn't draft it, um, <laughs> the way in which the Cross Project Council is set up, I mentioned it earlier, it's an egalitarian um, organization. So there are some different like membership levels. So there are voting members and voting members are made up of elected individuals from the various projects, and we can get into how that is made, but there's 15 voting members right now. Um, there's also the concept of regular members, which is a self-nominated process that we're still figuring out, and then there's observers. And observers is literally anyone from any project within the entire foundation, and I would, for the purpose of today's meeting, if no one objects, I would like to extend that to include everyone in the room. So even if you're not actively involved in this stuff, um, the way in which we're, our governance is set up is that we use consensus seeking. Consensus seeking as a process means you say an idea and if no one objects, it kind of moves forward. Um, the governance for the CPC states that any observer can participate in consensus seeking. So if you have problems with something, if you want to submit an idea, you don't actually need to be on the council. You just need to participate in the foundation. And that was something that was very intentional to try to make sure that anyone who wants to come and do the work can do the work and there isn't like some sort of arbitrary bar. So if you're in this room, if this is stuff you want to work on, if you have an idea, it's not like there's some special thing you need to do to be able to have a voice. Everyone in this room has a voice, so please participate. Thank you. Oh, this one is on. Okay. Um, all right. So to kick us off, I um, CPC folks, I had proposed. I don't know if y'all saw this um, in our Twitter massive Twitter DM. Um, uh, some objectives for this session. Hello. That's very hard to read. <laughs> Zoom enhance. Um, that we could proceed with sort of like our ordinary business, which we certainly have lots um, from last or last week to continue over, um, take questions from the population here, many of whom are probably experiencing this for the first time. And then um, possibly because this is such high value time for us, um, and we were having a great conversation about this at dinner last night, um, organizing some breakout sessions on different proposals that we have um, live right now, like the travel fund. And Manil had a good one last night, and I don't remember what it was. I'll remember it in a minute. Um, but does that sound um, reasonable? Joe, I'm looking at you because you're... <laughs> Dope. All right. Um, so ordinarily, we do this on um, on Zoom once a week, um, and are we, zooming, are we we are zooming. Uh, we're not live streaming, but we are zooming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, I will navigate over now to the yes, sir. Can you join the Zoom chat? Oh, yeah. yeah that's what I, mean. I can. Okay, um, for those who uh, are unfamiliar, we have the OpenJS Foundation um, GitHub work and all of the work of the CPC happens in the Cross Project Council repo. Um, the agenda items are pulled from the label Cross Project Council agenda. So um, our first item that we have 
remaining from last week is nominating the chair and the director. Um, Joe, do you want to, because I think you were leading this last week, or I'll let you talk to this one. Uh, will you open that? Uh, yeah. Open that up, yep. <clears throat> so I think essentially um, we have nominations open for the chair and director roles for the Cross Project Council. And the hope was that people would have an opportunity at uh, these events, the Collab Summit, JSConf, uh, whatnot, uh, generally here being in Berlin, to get to know each other a little bit better uh, while nominations are open, and then have voting start after these events, and then have voting uh, uh, conclude, uh, was it? June 19th. 19th, yeah. uh, just a few days before the next uh, board meeting. And I believe that the is is the process that we are to email uh, uh, nominations there. That last one to operations at openjsf.org, and uh, they'll remain private until the nomination period is over. And then when it's closed, uh, Brian Warner will will post all uh, nominations. Awesome. Yeah. Any open questions on this issue, or can we move on? Yes, it friend. might be useful to like the, the, can, the potential candidates are the people who are the voting members. It might be worth just showing that. So okay. I just think it's, it might be worthwhile if you could go over to the list of the voting candidate voting members because if people want to go and talk to them in terms uh -huh. of understanding the candidates, that would be a good start. Yep. Okay. So um, the voting CPC reps from the projects, um, it'll open here in just a second. Um, these are the folks who are our voting members. So from Node, Mateo and Joe, Dave and Timmy, Matt, Dylan, Jonah and Dan. Can you scroll all the way to the bottom? Yep. Because uh, I have a question actually related to this. Um, I made a mistake and reopened this issue. Uh, Nick O'Leary uh, dropped out because we thought we had too many IBMers, but uh, that was my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I posted Emily's uh, um, uh, what do you call it, handle into an IBM Slack and it came up, a similar name, similar location. I was like, okay, uh, he must be an IBM or should have checked. Anyway. Um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I don't know if I, I should open this up. You know, but uh, uh, it would be great if, if Nick were still included in uh, the nominees. And, uh, Plus guess, one. Yeah. Plus one. Plus one. All right, okay. done. Okay, great. So okay. that's solved. Congratulations. Very good. Okay, so, so these are our voting numbers um, uh, that you see here that Miles commented. Thanks for the correction. That's great. All right, cool. Can somebody give a too long day to read uh, about the, what, what's the role of the director versus the chair? Oh, Michael could do that. Sure. The, the chair is focused around coordinating the meetings that take place weekly and basically making sure there's an agenda, that things move forward, often gets pulled into, you know, when there's problems, that kind of stuff. So it's basically keeping the business part of things running. The director acts as, a, as the link between the CPC and the board of directors. So it actually goes to the board of director meetings, brings back and shares what information you can can't share everything because the board of directors, you know, there's some stuff which has to stay within that particular that group. Um, but, you know, comes back, represents best that they can, what's going on, where we need input, if there's questions, you know, often, so for example, some common things that we had in TSC was like, we have a legal question. Okay, well, they, they will take that question to the board and then passes it off to the legal committee. Or if we want to change some charters, uh, previous governance, the board had to review those. So Miles actually maintained the board of things like, here's the stuff we need to get to, to, to get the board to comment on and ask for. So that's kind of the separation. I can see Miles wants to say a little bit more. There you go. I'm itching, sorry. Um, so with the board role, one of the things to keep in mind, which is important, is like being the CPC board rep actually means that you're representing at the board every single project. And that can be really confusing because it means there's a lot of different hats that you wear, including your own. So there, there's actually a fiduciary duty and risk with being a board member. 
um, which is important to keep in mind if it's something that you want to nominate or eventually work towards doing. So every single board member has a fiduciary duty to the foundation to do what's in the best um, for the foundation itself. And um, you know, if things were to happen that caused financial disaster to the foundation, you could be held um, liable as an individual for that if you are responsible for it. Um, so that's one bit of responsibility that's good to keep on mind. Yes. 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 Okay. So, the, so the question was if there is, um, if the foundation has insurance in place for that liability, and the answer was yes. But the, if the, that doesn't cover you, just as, sorry. Um, yeah, weird board stuff. If you've ever sat on the board of a nonprofit, um, insurance doesn't cover you if you go against the will of the rest of the board. So you can't just speak out whenever you want on things that would risk things like the fiduciary responsibility um, of any of the individual projects as well, right? So everything that's housed under the foundation, um, potentially eroding the value of those individual projects, all falls under that. And since you're representing 31 different projects, and it's very possible that those projects don't even agree, um, like a really great example would be the merger that happened. When Node was first introduced to it, not everyone was positive about it. And whether or not I was personally super gung ho, which I was, um, I had to make sure to represent all of those viewpoints to the board and not just my own bias. But also a part of that is you ultimately have to vote, regardless of whether all of those projects are in conflict. So part of the responsibility is managing expectations around that and being careful in your delivery and also being transparent, right? Like it's, I think the nuance of being a, a director for an at-large. Yeah, um, I just want to move us on. I think those are great questions, but if the, anyone is interested in nominating or nominating someone else for a chair director role and you have questions, definitely go to these individuals about some of those responsibilities. Stage. Just, just want to keep it on a bit more case here. So our uh, next item was uh, nominations for regular members. Does anyone from the CPC want to speak to this uh, issue? Michael, since you uh, opened the issue? Yeah, let's just go down to the bottom to see if there's, I think it's just a, a time that anybody who's here um, and who's a member of one of the projects, I think we say it's, you know, to be a member for three months, if I remember correctly, wants to be part of the CPC, as it was mentioned er earlier. It's very open. You can be an observer, but if you want to actually say I'm committed, I'm going to participate regular, regularly. I think now we should just start. I think all we're waiting for is that the readme needs to be updated mm -hmm. so we have a place to have people start PRing our PR themselves in. But if you're interested, that's the next step. Just PR yourself in, saying I want to become a regular member. And and as was mentioned, you know, you get to participate in pretty much everything unless there's conflict, and, and that's when the voting members may have. I don't know, but that should happen very well. Uh, one thing that I want to add, regular members participate in the consensus seeking model of the CPC. So essentially, they, they vote, their voice is going to be heard. That's that their responsibility. It, like on the TSC side where we have a similar model, it's we very rarely have votes. Like I can't remember, it's like once every two, three months or something. So like Mateo said, pretty much most of the time you will just be participating like all the other. All right, Groovy. So definitely add your name to the readme via PR. Um, just going down, not in any particular order. New process for CPC reps to share responsibility for travel fund. This is actually one of the topics too that I'm suggesting we break out as a session. But Matteo, do you want to speak to this, or is Manel here? Uh. Yeah, I would like to speak not about this, but about the PR that I have created, because this is a big, bigger issue. So, uh, and Node.js as a travel fund, as you probably know. Uh, I mean, if you travel here for the travel fund, with the travel fund, hey, thank you, folks. And uh, yeah, that's, was, that's amazing. Um, and uh, the travel fund serves the purpose of enabling individuals that cannot rely on corporate sponsors to travel. We always recommend your uh, employer to fund your travel, but that's not usual. That's not possible. Not always possible in both small and large organizations. So you can even be, uh, you know, uh, shelves, some thousands of 
dollars or euros or euros to travel might not be something that you can you're not willing to do out of pocket. So there's that. Um, so um, as part of this, the no travel fund serves two purposes, and one is uh, enabling people to come to this summit and the next summit and stuff, and also for uh, doing stuff, uh, promoting node at conference and events and organizing other things. So those are two different roles. And I, uh, as part of my proposal on downloading this issue, um, I am proposing to create uh, a, a team under the CPC that is uh, responsible for organizing the summit and that will have oversee on a travel fund for the summits that will be available to all projects to some extent. And this needs to be defined. This is an open question. So how do you break out that fund? Uh, and uh, and that is will be in the you know in the budget of this the, the collaborator summit themselves. Um, and there are some questions around you know all of this. So it's uh, if you like this event and you want to be part of the organization of the next event of the next collab summit, please uh, get in touch. Uh, event organization is a, a rather different thing from running an open source project, but it's uh, as important. Uh, because, you know, being together and meeting each other face to face can help resolve things and move things forward, resolve conflicts, you know. Uh, I had a nice conversation with, uh, uh, with France yesterday night and they were saying that sharing human beings are strange animals and sharing a meal uh, together helps move out a lot of, uh, you know, bad, um, a, a lot of things and in good conversation. So that was pretty much that was fantastic. So that's uh, more or less this. Um, there is, um, if you go up, there is a PR open from me. I don't remember the number. Uh, on, yeah. Yes, it's on the table. So yes, uh, 187, the first one. And it's uh, basically that. And if you want to chime in, that's probably the good time. So, you know, that's, that's kind of that. Um, Do you want to have a breakout session with any with folks here to this week on this topic on this proposal? If there are people that are willing, yes, definitely. And you know, each uh, if somebody wants to you know reach me out, reach out to me, or just write something there, we can we can talk about it, and that would be pretty pretty helpful, I think. That's it. Groovy. Thank you. Okay. Um. Next agenda item will be um, initial uh, process for electing voting members from non-impact projects. Um, so for some context, um, we kind of have a chicken and the egg problem where we were uh, all impact projects get up to two representatives, voting representatives on the CPC, and then we elect two more representatives from the other categories of project. But we had this sort of like, we need to have a group that adopts the voting process, but we, you know, so anyway. So we just took everybody who self-nominated um, as an initial sort of just to get us bootstrapped and going, um, but we need to actually define what um, our like election process looks like for um, for these folks in a more you know regular capacity. Um, Miles, do you want to speak to this one since you opened the issue, or does somebody else? Hi. Um, so I mean, Joy, as much as you want to talk about it too, please feel free because it was originally your proposal also. <laughs> um, oh, wait, process for electing voting yeah, members. Oh, yeah. I'm a mess. Okay, so um, I th think that for this first pass, we kind of just said everyone who raised their hand because there wasn't too many just all became voting members. Um, I think it also kind of falls in line with like voting members are more a role of responsibility than power in, in the design. Um, but we did look at a couple different voting platforms that we could use, including uh, Helios, and then um, the other voting platform is CIVS. And there's a couple different like methods for voting that we could use. So there's 
Um, Civs does a method where you kind of stack rank all the characters and then behind the scenes it figures out who is the most voted and then can kind of stack rank them. Uh, Helios has a couple different ways that you can set it up, but the way that I was suggesting was inspired how the OSI does their election for their board, where essentially you get a list of all of the candidates and you just check next to the ones that you're okay with being. So it's not like picking anyone, it's just like, hey, here are all the candidates that I agree with, and then it's whoever had the most votes of confidence, you then stack rank based on that. Um, my understanding is that we're not in a rush to solve this problem right now, but it's definitely something that we want to codify so that when elections come up in the next year, um, we solve it. I guess the only thing that we haven't really planned for here, I'm not sure if we need to pre-optimize for it, is like, what happens when new projects join? Um, and if a new project joins, as an impact level, do they immediately elect their two representatives? Does that is that like kind of a mid-election and then it happens again at the same election time? If new projects join as non-impact level projects um, and they're early, like they didn't have the opportunity to raise their hand and participate in this, what do we want to do? So uh, I don't think we need to make decisions now, but like those are probably things that we want to start thinking about so that we have an answer for people when they show up instead of kind of dealing with these conflicts. But we can also just figure it out as we go. I think the approach that we've taken so far has been like hyper inclusive. I guess another thing to keep in mind also, um, we drafted all of this governance as part of the bootstrap process and it was kind of in a vacuum and not reality. We can change the charter at any time. The CPC charter does need to go to the board to be changed and that's something the director would be responsible for helping to do. But if we find that like what's in the charter doesn't fit with the way that we actually want to do things, we can augment it as we go. And one related issue that we should, I think, get sorted at least in the next couple of months or so is when the next or well, first elections would actually happen because going with exactly one year is a really, really inconvenient given that it was what, like three weeks before now. And that would suggest that we would end up in a similar situation as now, where people who, you know, get picked have about, you know, a couple of weeks in order to get the travel and everything sorted to participate in the summit. If we are going to follow the past precedent of how these uh, Node.js summits have, have gone, so that ends up interlinking with what do we want to do with the future of collapse summits. And I, I would appreciate if we ended up with the situation where the elections were happening at least, you know, a month or a couple of months apart from any collab summit. Uh, I was just going to add, you could even think of you might want to do it the other way so that people can get together at the collab summit, know who that they're voting, you know, get a better feel for who they're going to opt to, to vote for or not. And so you might want to even do them afterwards. So, yeah. Yeah. so you're right that figuring out the timing is important. So, so, so effectively, we might end up, uh, I mean, with the current timing, the presuming past precedent follows and the next collapse summit happens in, was it Montreal uh, in December, yeah. then it would make sense for the next uh, election to happen, for example, in January. Yeah. Possibly, like I guess it's, like that's even saying, or a year from now, plus or minus a few months. Yeah, 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 as I said, yeah. But, Yes. That, 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 it did remind me, there's one thing which you're not going to find here because it's actually in the TSC repo. Okay. But one of the things the, CP, the, the CPC does need to, to approve is the updated charter for the Node.js community. Um, it used to be, you know, basically, uh, Miles was taking that to the board, they said it was fine, but it's now the CPC that's going to be reviewing those charters. So I don't know, you know, how, how we want to do that here, but we should probably, you know, at least get started on that. Yeah, that would be nice. I don't think we have a quorum to do that. But... Yeah, so I don't know if we want to discuss it or just have it as a separate issue. So I think we do, so it isn't captured in our thing that generates the agenda. So that that is- We were having a discussion that that probably doesn't cut cross organizations. Yeah, we need to fix the tool to do uh, cross organizations. <laughs> I don't think so, in the sense that I think it's better for process 
coordination that the node JS, TSC, and Compound go and open an issue on the uh, cross project council repo. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. because it's, uh, you know, the, the Node.js, the uh, TSC and CONCOM and all the projects, when they need to change their charters, they will need to have their own discussions on that. And then they should ask the CPC to... When uh, they're ready for like official review. To, for a, an official review. So, so as our CPC representative, I'll ask you openly. Yeah, that's, that's what, essentially, it's me and Joe, so yes, essentially, yes. That's more or less the, I think that should be the, the process of, uh, of doing this in a, in a way that is, because it, we have 31st, 31 uh, uh, projects, so I don't want to go around and check things on 31 first. The 31 different GitHub organizations. It's going to be it's it's going to be hard. So you're not going to like where I was going to go with this. <laughs> yeah, no, I likely not. We we probably should start a tracking issue for so for those of you in the room who are representing any of the 31 projects in the foundation. We do need to go through the process of chartering all of them. Um, one of the things that we did discuss, which I don't think we got in, we're going to get into today too much, is like. We have a process for onboarding new projects, and Joy and I have been working on like a checklist and process. Uh, Joy started the work, and um, I've been adding a few things. But one thing that I think would be good is if all of the projects kind of like dog food that process. Um, I don't think it's fair as a foundation to ask new projects to do things that we ourselves a aren't willing to do or b aren't capable of doing. So we should really make sure that like the bar that we're setting for new projects coming in, especially at the various levels of projects, are things that the levels of projects that we have are doing. Um, it's very easy to kind of get brought in just because you were there before, and then like not really make it fair for new people that are coming in. Um, but Part of all of this would be we maybe should start a tracking issue for like the onboarding of projects, which includes chartering all of the projects which don't have charters, which would probably involve, hey, maybe we should make like a default template of what a charter should look like that's fill in the blank that makes it easy. And we could probably take like the node charter as a starting place. Um, but I do think one of the things for other projects that are here that's good to know. I just, I remembered what it was that Manil suggested last night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, one of the things that I think is important to consider is like, Node has been doing this for, you know, a couple of years now. So we have a lot of process in place. Doesn't mean you have to do it the way that we're doing it. Um, I think there's value in kind of a lot of people having similar things, like especially just like not, not having to recreate everything from first principles. But I don't think that projects should feel like they have to adopt the governance of Node to do what they're doing. And there are some things in our charter that are pretty exact. One of the big things to keep in mind is the difference between your governance and your charter. Um, charters are things that require other parties to approve of for changes, whereas the governance is something that you can manage yourself. Um, I see Adam nodding along here because he, he, we learned that lesson the hard way. Um, but it's like, you want to actually have as little as possible in the charter that just defines like the goals and mission and like defining what you own as opposed to like the group that has chartered you. Whereas like the day-to-day -day operations and things that you may want to like tweak on a more regular basis should be more in a governance document. Um, Tracy. Yeah, just to like, just to cover that though. So to know what you need to have in the charter versus the governance, right, by a bare minimum, you can just look at the charter of the OpenJS Foundation or ask somebody else. So like the chairs, I think the, the representatives of each project should probably be aware of like what that charter says just so that you can avoid any hiccups down the road, which is writing something in your governance that actually requires external uh, support or consensus on, um, even if it's just amongst the other projects. Um, Although to the point I was saying a little while ago, now that charter changes for projects will be going through the cross project council instead of the board it's going to be way easier and a lot of the pain that like the node foundation had like the situation that we were alluding to before was like we did some charter changes and then there were some like editorial changes that also happened and then everything got mixed in and then it was really hard for the lawyers to figure out the difference 
and then it took like four months to do something that should have taken like a week. So we protected against that. But um, yeah, if anyone needs help with this, just ask me. So I want to um, move us along and suggest that, um, you know, again, because we can take advantage of everyone being together in the space that um, we potentially have, if you're interested in um, writing the draft proposal for how we do elections, which was the original uh, agenda topic, and or if you're interested in um, being part of a group that helps kind of figure out how we write the charters for 31-ish projects, um, let's do some breakout sessions on that because we can we can probably get a lot done with just half an hour and brainstorming. Um, all we have to do is just get a document with just the initial ideas down and then we can like advance them. Um, so I wanna take advantage of your brain power. While you're here. Uh, let's move on to our next um, agenda item, which actually I think we can close this one since we identified that you're not an idea. If you, if you refresh, I already closed that. Oh, okay, yeah. dope, thanks. Uh, uh, then um, review meeting times would be the next one. Um, we really do need to settle this one, you guys. Um, so, I, a lot of people are not here for this, yeah, so we're not thinking. Okay. I'm not thinking <laughs> Okay, then that means our next uh, CPC meeting will be on Monday the 3rd at, I don't know, actually, because I don't know what time zone I'm in anymore. <laughs> It'll be Monday. You might go to the ship. Pardon? Oh, yeah, the shoot. It would be 8 p.m. local time in Berlin, unless we pick a different time right now. Okay. Uh, which... To that issue, I don't know because I, I know there are people who um, have scheduling restraints who aren't here. So should we stick with 8 p.m. on Monday for, for those of us who are here? Or we yeah, should open an issue about I it. propose we have like a virtual breakout session to just hash this out. And I mean, not necessarily here, but sometime soon. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's definitely sticky. Yeah. And what time of the meeting will you be doing once? So um, the lead on Tuesday is uh, 1600 UTC. And then the lead on Wednesday is also 1600 UTC. But we were talking about like doing alternating um, as we have been. Right now we, we always meet on Mondays, but it alternates between two different times on the day. One of the TSC members has a tool that can pull these and like show you all like the best options. I love it. Okay. So uh, recording next week, could we just decide to go for a different day than Monday given that today is uh, Thursday? Meeting. Yeah, we, I mean, we could do that. Um, I mean, we, but, we were talking about this specifically last time. We ended up talking, I think, about alternating between full 1600 and 1900 UTC on Wednesday. So can't we just at least switch to Wednesday for the day and then hash out time later? Changing the day right now, like at least the time that we have, we know works for some people's schedules. So switching the day, but not the table time from this calendar may end up with us picking a time where no one can show up. Also the TC39 meetings are on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. Yeah, um, that's a good Never point. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll, we'll stick with what we have, but I think we should definitely shoot to address this promptly on Monday. Um, okay, I think that might get us through all of the agenda items, in which case we can, actually let me double check that. Um, we have a project board. Um, this board has all of the items um, that we have identified as work to be conducted post bootstrap. And we have been going through that. Um, I don't know if we want to do that now or rather um, since we have 20 minutes to lunch, open up for just any questions that people have. Yeah, I'd suggest but, skipping that. Okay. You do the other things, I think are better. I, I agree and I think everybody 
not okay. Um, so let's just open up the floor for any questions from our wonderful group of participants because we have lots of people in this room who aren't normally um, able to make the CPC meetings. Do you have any questions about um, or ideas? That's another high value thing that we can be talking about. Um, Glenn. Hello, my name's Glenn Sullivan. This is very new to people. So for people that were members of the No Foundation and just joined as an individual rather than uh, as part of an organization, are they going to be grandfathered into this new organization? Is that, have we thought about that? So would there be individual members? Would people join as an individual member of the Open Foundation? And if they were a member of the Node, the Jazz Foundation Fund, would they be sort of so I'm going to let Tracy answer the question. Yeah. So we have a proposal from the bootstrap phase of work um, around individual membership. It just needs to be applied um, and expanded. So the idea is, I believe, uh, that was accepted so far, was that there would not be an individual, necessarily a foundation, uh, sorry, a membership for a specific project. It would be for the foundation overall. Um, the Details of that are yet to be worked out in the implementation details that we need to do now. Um, but there, the thought around that was that once the CPC was formed, this is something that needs to be owned as sort of a subcommittee because the individual membership as it stood was very node centric, obviously, with the design um, and with many projects potentially being represented, not necessarily every single one, um, because that's not necessarily that every project would want to be a considered as part of that program. Um, but there is a basic design that's been laid out. Um, we just need to implement. Thank you. The thing I can add is like, I think the individual membership, at least in my mind, is a way for people who aren't active in the projects themselves to get involved. Like yourself, you're already a member of the No Project. And all of those members I see as being part of the foundation. Like for example, if you're a member and participating in the No Project, you can self-nominate as a CPC regular member, right? So you're already kind of a member. It's more like if you wanted, you know, that's the opportunity for people who aren't able to, to interact as directly to become individual members. So that, that's just one to clarify that I see that you're already a member of the bigger the bigger group. But we appreciate your financial contribution. <laughs> Try to be quick this time. Um, one of the community directors that existed in the Node Foundation prior to the merger was the individual member director. Um, with the new bylaws, that directorship still exists, but it requires 4,000 members in the program to oh, 2,000? A number that we're going to revisit, anyways, <laughs> to activate it. Well, that was like what we talked about in the board was that, like, if that number can't be reached and it doesn't seem reasonable that we can discuss it and figure out. But overall, like we're going to try to ramp up the program. Um, Tracy has put together like a really amazing proposal that includes like price points and rolling it out and what would be the benefits of the program. So as Tracy was mentioning, like there is totally the intention of still rolling out a full individual membership program. A team of people did it. Other questions? Yeah. So I'm like, who all wants to come and join the CPC? Because that's one of the things we're looking for. Is, you know, we had a core number of people who helped bootstrap, but now we're hoping to get more people from across the project to get involved. There's lots of different work to be done. So hopefully everybody says, hey, this is interesting, and just come and get involved, right? Is the, is the one message. I love that message. Okay, Rad. Um, obviously, we'll be here for basically all weekend and also next week. So if there's any um, questions that you think of in the meantime about the CPC or about how to get involved, um, you can you know, come poke any one, Mateo or Michael or Tracy or Miles or myself or anybody. Joe. Joe, um, Chris. Chris. Everybody, um, and we, we would like to welcome you and to, to 
program management of, of the CPC group. So um, with our last 15 minutes, um, I was going to suggest that we uh, potentially arrange some breakout sessions in order to generate some proposals and forward momentum on some of the issues that we're identifying. Um, let's just super quickly maybe recap what the proposal process of, of how we've been working. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, figured. So um, we have a staging process for CPC proposals. So, um, and a proposal can be anything. It can be a change to how we charter things. It can be a program idea. Um, so for example, one of the program ideas that we have is a recognition program. That's the one that I was like, oh yeah. Um, if you have something that you'd like to see or service that you'd like to see the foundation um, take on, uh, then all you have to do is create a pull request on the CPC repo um, as a stage zero proposal. And then what we do is iterate on those ideas and refine them um, until we are able to adopt them as stage three slash final. So kind of a little take on the TC process. Um, my proposal is that we uh, have some breakout sessions while we're out here to generate stage zero proposals for some of these items. Um, and the ones that we've identified, and Mateo already has one for travel fund management. Um, we have uh, some body of work already around onboarding, but that needs to be refined. Um, we have the elections topic um, that uh, we've, we've been discussing. Two that we haven't are infrastructure. So let me just like quickly describe the problem space here. We have 31 projects, all of which have different um, setups and, and infrastructure needs. It's kind of a hot mess and we need to probably streamline it. Not we need to probably, we desperately need to streamline it because it's very hard to manage. Um, so I'd love to talk to folks about that. Um, and then um, there was an idea for a recognition program. The JS Foundation used to have a recognition program. It was kind of a failure, but um, and then I think there's some ideas around a no recognition program. Um, I would love for us to, again, make, make use of the spaces that we have for this. Um, how, does anybody have a recommendation for how we can proceed to organize these? Or should I just like, you know, throw spaghetti? If you want to talk about the next, this summit organization, I'm going to the table over there. <laughs> okay, follow Mateo to, to talk about summit organization. Um, I would love to talk about infrastructure for projects. Um, so, and I'm basically free this afternoon. Um, so anybody who has, who would like to tackle that with me, I would appreciate that. Yay, thanks. Anybody want to take any of the others? I'll do project onboarding. All right, Miles has project onboarding. Michael? I was going to say, if anybody wants to talk about the elections, I can provide the background of what we already discussed. But if there isn't, I'll go do one of the other ones. So anybody interested? Put your hand up if you're interested in that. I think voting is one of those things that everybody has an opinion on that yeah. nobody wants to do. Okay. So we'll, I mean, we can do that. We'll continue to do that through the, uh, through the GitHub issue. Groovy. Um, and uh, Manil, who is not in the room, and um, Ahmed from uh, NPM, I think, will, they're interested in the recognition stuff. So if you have thoughts on what the foundation can do to say thank you to our, our membership and to um, for contributors or for maintainers, um, let's chat with those folks. Um, if there's no other ideas for breakout sessions, we can conclude. So I guess um, Mateo's got a uh, travel fund, or sorry, a summit. Were you going to have like where are we going to go for the? Oh, uh, for uh, infra, I guess just because there's not that many of us, I'll just go in this corner. Tracy and I, I guess we're considering chatting about individual membership more, but if it spreads us too thin. Well, 
Well, then at some point, Tracy and I would love to talk about yeah. individual membership more. So. All right, Ruby. So if you're interested in any of these topics, go find those individuals. We'll call this session concluded for now. Um, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>